Mix FM 104.9. Dandy Warhol's Bohemian Like You. It's the Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, exactly. And Carl, who's Carl's turned in. our microphones on. We yeah. Can't believe it. Good to see you, Carl. Good to see you, Ricky. Cheers. Cheers. Now, in a, in a fun-filled and music-filled show, We've got music and fun. Yes, looking forward to that. Two hours, solid two hours. There's no gaps. There's nothing. There'll There's be no, no dead air. air. There will be adverts sometimes. There'll be adverts, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, that that's what's what pays our wages, isn't it, really? Certainly, certainly. And some of the adverts, I think, are quite amusing. <laughs> yes. No, I um, think like the ones that you're on. Yeah. Uh, we've got um, our hip-hop challenge. We've got Song for the Lovers, Song for the Ladies. Yep. We've got a film review. So Magnificent. Just, Had yeah. any calls about that, Rick? Any, maybe Channel 5 or someone onto you? No, they haven't, no. That's no, strange, that's no. weird. No, but uh, it, it's. I think it's a, a bit of a head of the because it's very unique. Sure, it's sure. Not like film, yeah. Is it? It's sort of like. Yeah, it's a yeah. bit a bit out there. Yeah, Anything caught your eye uh, this well, week, Steve? Rick, I uh, I know you, both you and I uh, are kind of obsessed with these people who believe in you know people who can predict the future or yeah. have got to contact with the dead or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I know Mystic Meg's a bit of a nonsense, but people do take her seriously. And on the cover of the Sun today. Mystic Meg won me 15 million quid. Wow. Right, you're thinking, that's not, that's a pretty amazing claim. I know that Carl believes in Mystic Meg and all that sort of rubbish, you know. You're thinking, wow, here at last is proof that she has got powers. And you're wondering to yourself, well, maybe she predicted the numbers specifically, you know, that's, that would be a hell of a... a just a, to him. Yeah, which is incredible, which is absolutely yeah. incredible. And so there's this guy, uh, Lottery Mad Tom Naylor, he's a, a lorry driver, right, he won 15 million quid. Yeah. He says, um, I always read my horoscope in the sun and follow the advice. Uh, basically, what Meg said was, keep a lottery ticket in a yellow mug to add luck. So you're so, thinking, well, okay, so he, he's kept his ticket in a yellow mug. That's still pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't have a yellow mug, says Tom, so I put the pages of my map book, uh, so I put the ticket in the pages of my map book, which is yellow. Right. He's used, he's used mm. the yellow. No, he's used the <laughs> yeah, yellow. Yeah, no, see, I'm, I don't know much about how Mystic Meg works. I'm assuming maybe there's some kind of pseudoscience that she applies. Yeah. I think if she'd said, put it near anything yellow, fine. Yeah. She said, put it in a yellow mug. That's pretty specific. Yeah. From that, he's thought, well, I'll, well, I'll ignore it? Meg's advice. I always do what she says. If she's, she says well, put it in a yellow mug, I'll put it She's had two sort of like, you know, um, uh, points of reference there. Mm. The descriptive, the yellowness of the object yeah. and the object itself, the sure. noun should be a mug. Yeah. What's missing in the yellow book is the mugness. The mugness. It's, it's one of the got, It's got elements. lots of bookness, but yeah. it wasn't the bookness that gave him the <laughs> exactly. million. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. I reckon, I reckon Mystic Meg won me seven and a half million. Right. Would have been a more <laughs> right. accurate. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. So, I, mean, I don't know, what, Carl, do you think that that's pretty spooky? And weird, unnatural stuff. So I'm just a bit livid today. I wasn't really listening to what you were saying. Not paying attention. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Do you so, want to notify so, us before? Yeah. You know, we so ask you, you, are, you are giving to us. As, go on. What, no, it would have just been nice if you would have like warned me. You were going to ask me about it. I'm just just a bit right. livid. Go I'm on. Just, what about? Just. just Have I done something? Talk about. No, no, not you two. Just, just a bit livid. Uh, XFM 104.9. <laughs> Stand clear. Adam F, MOP. We all know who's dad Adam F is. Who was no. it? Again? We all know who's Adam F's dad of. We all of no dads. Do we? Rick, can you keep it, keep filling? Because I've realised I've left my mobile phone on and the kind of calls I'm going to be getting on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I'll just keep yeah, uh, just No, keep no, no, it's just. Oh, that was Adam F and MOP. Stand clear. We all know Adam F's got a dad. Oh, done it again. Do you remember the trivia quiz? I forgot it. Whose dad is Adam F? Elvin Stardust. Yes, Shane Fenton, that's what the F must be for. You're back. That's done. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be, oh, oh all the people that are call. calling you all the time. All <laughs> oh, the ladies. Oh, God. Anyway, XFM 104.9. We're going to start now. Gun. We're going to start now. This is proper radio from now. Go. <laughs> Go. Oh, there's a lot of pressure on me now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to muck it up. <laughs> um, now, uh, I, Rick, I know you're a big trivia fan. I know you're mm. obsessed with trivia. And I thought Love to myself, it. well, how can I entertain Rick on Saturday? Go on. So I was uh, wandering around on the web looking for, um, uh, Trivia, basically, that yeah. it could entertain you. Yeah. And you're a big animal trivia. I love you? animal facts. There's not much that you don't know about animals. Oh. But here's uh, You're going to catch me out now, aren't you? No, well, I don't know. Um, here's one. I don't know if you've heard this one before. Ants yeah. never sleep. No, I know. Yeah. Who I know. And, 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 to say and they've got alcohol in their blood, so they don't freeze and winter. Though. And that's why you never see a lazy ant. It's always working. Mm. It's drunk, mm. but it's always but they, working. They never sleep, but they do take a lot of fag breaks. Yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. I think it's because they can't sleep, because it's like noisy neighbours. There's about mm. a million of them yeah, living like sometimes in a room. Mm. And they just, it must be very... But you see them, you see them carrying a leaf and they see someone else and they go, do you want a hand with that? And they go, don't be silly, you're carrying some at eight times your body weight as it is. Mm. He goes, well, you know, I've got another pair of hands free. Yeah. Give you a hand. Yeah, yeah they're great no, they're hands. incredible. They're incredible. Yeah, I knew that one next. Um, okay, well, right, this is, uh, this is one I'm throwing right at you as well, Carl. Uh, there's only one bird 
that has a penis. It's Which not, bird it's is not it? a joke. It's no, not, it's not, not a joke. It's not a joke. This is a genuine trivia question. I'd say. Oh, I say, I think I've seen one on this. Uh, is it an ostrich? Right, you're going for ostrich, Carl. I'll go for ostrich as well. Right. Did you come up with that yourself, or? <laughs> yeah, I was okay. going to say that before right. you said it. Well, uh, guys, you went for ostrich. Chicken. You're both wrong. It's actually the swan. <laughs> I enlarged it to chicken. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Have you, mm. That's a bit worrying, then, because I thought I saw an ostrich penis, so what was I looking at? I don't know, were you just examining it closely at the zoo? What were no, you? I just, I was just, it's probably a strap-on. It was probably two lesser ostriches giving yeah. each other one. <laughs> exactly. And I just, and that, that's, that's how that can influence people. Things like that. Dirty, filthy, lesser <laughs> ostriches can confuse a child if I he's know. at the zoo and he doesn't know. A swan's got, that's, that's really annoying. I'd like, oh, never give a swan a knob. Mm. It's, a little, the, it's the little puffiest of it all is the birds. It's the puffiest of all birds. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm protected by the queen. Mm. I, but I need a knob. I'd give, if I had to give a knob to any bird, um, <laughs> Good question. No, I no. I, no, I wish I'd posed that myself. If the, you could give a, no, a, a knob <laughs> to any bird, what would it be? Phone in. A, vulture. A, oh, of course a vulture. That, yeah. They need a, a, a big vein yeah. bang stick. Yeah. What about yeah. yourself, Carl? If you could give a knob to any bird. And don't make it rude, or if I could give a knob to any bird, what I'd make bird it What bird do you suit it up? It's um, got to be a bird of prey or something like that, hasn't it? Cool. It's the robin, really. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, that just would be Christmas huge. cards would be like... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> the, be but it's, it's a normal human-sized yeah, knob exactly. on a robin. That would be, be, be great, wouldn't it? Be and the other thing annoying about this, this is, this is ironic, right? Now, all, the male of all bird species are usually... They're called cock. Yes. Right. But the only bird with a cock... Yeah. Right, is called a cob. Is that what a swan's called? Yeah, they're right? cob and pen. They're not cock and hen. That's annoying. And he's got a... They've, he isn't a cock, but he's got a cock. Yeah. Yeah. Quick query there, Rick. Go on. When you said then cock, yeah. presumably you meant male bird yeah. the first time you said it. Yeah. The second time you said it, you said cock. Did yeah. you mean the, the penis? Well, you're showing off the whole farce of radio broadcasting. Because you're not really allowed to say cock. No, exactly. No. One cock would be, cause great offence. Yeah. The other cock's fine. <laughs> exactly. It's weird, isn't it? It is strange. It is strange. So, I mean, if we said, if I said now to you, you know, um, oh, I like cocks. Yeah. Meaning birds. Yeah, that's that'd fine. That would be fine. Yeah. But if I meant penises, it would be a problem. If you like cocks, it was pen... Yeah, yeah, yeah right. that would be... Carl, yeah. do you like cocks? <laughs> do you like cocks? No. Right, okay, that's fine, that's fine. I was asking if you like No, I like, I, I like, you know... Yeah. I well, like I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, um, tits. The small birds the that small come bird. down and peck at you. Yeah. Yeah, you like tits yeah. and cocks. There's nothing... <laughs> tits and cocks. There's nothing wrong with... There's nothing... Carl, don't worry. There's nothing wrong no, with saying tits and I cocks. Said, when I said tits, I meant the little birds. Yeah, And when I said down. cocks, I mean the little... The, yeah. the big birds. Yeah. Do you know, when, um... <laughs> go on, no, go on. No, um, it's just that... It's when you're talking about tits. Yeah. Um, you know, at the milk. Do, uh, do you... They, they, they... I like the fact they flutter away when they hear the milkman coming. Oh, what? come on. So when... What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, when the milkman's coming, when he's walking up the road. Ash, and sometimes, lovely song. Got to apologise to our producer there, because he was worried about... It was a bit, there was nothing wrong with it. It's just like saying, you what you know, you like watching birds in the it's garden. Just that I think you're better than that. I know it's cheap, isn't it, to say like, we yeah, like I tits. like tits. Yeah, I like cocks. So uh, we're a bit more literary now. One of my favourite things Go is on. Fanny by Gaslight. Really? That's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. I'm a big fan of Moby Dick. Oh, the oh yeah, the book Moby yeah. Dick. Yeah, 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 not the medical condition. There's no, nothing no, 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 in no, 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 no. It's the big no, no. horrible thing that used to swallow semen. Yeah. Now I. In the winter. Yeah. Steve. Go on. There's nothing I like more than yeah. to keep my hands warm in a muff. <laughs> no, sure, sure, sure. You mean those kind of furry things that sort of classy looking ladies? Yeah, posh ladies on. often <laughs> put their hands... <laughs> yeah, you, know, uh, you know when you go <laughs> have a nice, like, a party and they're leaving... a nice party, yeah, a winter they, party. And you might take the wrong hat or something. There's nothing I like more than to see two posh women with their hands in each other's muffs. Oh, that's always a And they're going, oh, this must be yours. Yeah, that is, is always funny. Yeah. That's always yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, seriously, no, no, I'll start this, you're right, I've got a degree. Not, I think, I, I, just, I just remembered that my favourite Beatles song is Come Together. Yeah. Now, we're going to stop this now, Carl, because it's childish. Uh, I, 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 you're right, I've got a philosophy degree, for yeah. Christ's sake, and it's, it's about time. Who's your favourite philosopher? Do you mind me asking? Well, I would tell you, except when I ever talk about it, I go into a Cockney accent. Really? So it can be like, my favourite philosopher, I like a bit of Kant. Right. Is that Immanuel Kant, yeah. the philosopher? Yeah. That's strange. Yeah. That's strange. What's his name again? Kant. Oh, yeah. 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 That can be weird. Can be strange. Look at Carl's oh, look face. Look at his face. Look at his face. Join oh. in, Carl. 
Oh, Undo your trousers. Just we'd be like out. Stan Boardman when he out. told the Fokker joke. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we won't do local radio again <laughs> for ten years. B and Brown, Dolphins Were Monkeys. Yep. For that. I don't know what that was. Um, I'm still pissed off that swans have got cocks. Yeah. It's a waste. It's a waste of a knob with a swan. They don't know what they're doing with it half the time. Um, now we've got some great... Do you remember... We're stopped all the silly innuendos now. But do you remember... I think it's because they've got a long neck <laughs> and to balance them properly in the water. <laughs> a like what are those things that boats have underneath? A rudder. No. No. Yeah. You know the I mean? ke like the keel. Yeah. The big. Maybe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It might be. He might be right. Yeah. Balance. What about? It. But ducks would need one as well, wouldn't they? <laughs> ducks don't. Because no, they've got short necks. Oh, I see what you mean. It's the necks. Yeah. Is so hold on. So do you think that's so long necks, long knob? Don't look at me, Javis. That's Steve. I know. <laughs> no. Sandy Toshfeg's got a tiny cock, hasn't she? <laughs> but she has got one, which is interesting. <laughs> That's libelous. Yeah. I'd just like to say now that Sandy Toshfeg has never had a knob. No, she's not. <laughs> but you're not lying about the neck. No, she's got a little yeah, neck. A That's little fine. Neck. That's 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 clear for all to see. I just remember um, a, a bloke I saw on uh, Opportunity Knocks once. Opportunity Knocks? Yeah. It was a pianist. Who, well, it's true. And his name was Wayne King. Mm. I, do you like Wayne King? Carl, what's your opinion on Wayne King? <laughs> I don't know his work. <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're not a fan of his work? <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. Carl, we asked your opinion, mate, and you've given it, and that's all we can ask for. <laughs> oh, no opinion on Wayne King If you, all. If you're a fan of Wayne King at home, please get in touch. The email address uh, I had, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. What was the number again? 08700 800 You know, if you like Wayne King or if, you know... <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> We're asking someone's music opinion. It's a music station. What? It's, it's going to be like this all day. <laughs> <laughs> if we, let's if talk we... about you and your girlfriends again. I think people enjoy that more. Oh! oh well, I you think... are grumpy. Why are you grumpy? You're all grumpy because you've been loaded. Come on, tell us. Come I on. Think, I think I've got SAD. What's that mean? That thing when it's Shard dark. <clears throat> Go on. When it's dark outside and you feel depressed. Oh, yeah. I think I've got that. But you're from Manchester, aren't you? Isn't it like pitch black there all the time? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it like what, which countries? Is it Iceland? Where it's like it's like dark yeah. all year. The land of the mole people. Yeah. No, yeah. I was telling Steve before. In fact, I'm not going to bore you with it. Go on. What, what were we saying about? Wayne well, you King? bored me with it earlier. Can't you bore him with yeah, it? Yeah, it's only fair. What were we saying about wh what? Wayne King. Did oh, you Carl, play a record. Oh, that's a disgusting, disgusting. Carl. You're a pervert. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's what we're doing, Steve. We are indeed. Before that Weezer, Island in the Sun. Can I just ask Carl a quick question? Yeah, why does he swear so much on radio? No, 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 no. no. Carl, did you see that film last night, Gaylord Say No? Mm, yes. Oh, what were you we watching that for? Yeah, weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, you're always going to lose with that one. <laughs> Rick, did you see that film last night, Gaylord Say No? No. Ooh. Oh no! Yeah, you're a gay lord. Oh. That is actually the official way of finding out if someone's gay. That's how Oscar Wilde got caught. That's exactly how he got caught. Yeah, they went. Yeah. Well, we got no evidence. The arm was okay. Anyway, well, cheers, my lad. Oh, before you go, uh, Oscar, see that film last night? Go and say no. No, no, take him away. Yeah, take <laughs> him to that bender downstairs. Take him out of my sight. That is how they got him. That's yeah, the official way. Yeah, children need last night, Rick. Oh. <laughs> I, I was watched a bit of it. Did you watch any of it, Carl? I was it's awful, it. It isn't it? It is pretty bad. It's the worst thing ever. I mean, it just... I've said this before. The thing about Kiruna Needy, it makes the whole country and BBC One for one day into just one big school fate. Yeah, Do exactly. you know what I mean? It's so pathetic. The entertainment is ill thought out. It's just it's just boring. I'd prefer it if they just made everyone pay a pound. That would be fine, yeah. And they, and they make more money and we wouldn't have to sit through it. Just add it to the licence But fee. surely that's, yeah, exactly, surely that's just a taxation that we should, you know. But that's As fine. opposed to going through this nonsense of seeing people <clears throat> from West End musicals who aren't selling come out mm. and yeah. do a song. Mm. Yeah, of course. God. But it's just that they may as well, because I know there was Terry Wogan at one point going around the audience with a bucket, just rallying it, getting all members of the audience to put loose change in a bucket. <laughs> oh, this is national television. Yeah. And I'm watching, they've already had to sit through three hours of rubbish. Now is you're making them pay for for it. Does he get paid? I, I don't know if he's done it for... I know, you know, there's a lot of people who go on there, though. All the pop acts that go on there, they're all plugging a new single. Of course, but that's... Mm. Every, yeah. It's like, well, it's, it's this mask of sort of this charade of charity, but they're all plugging a single. Yeah. yeah. It's just pathetic. It's utterly... They may as well bring on a big tom polar 
you know, and guess how many kind of pennies are in the jar. Out of Pudsey, you lose his eye as well. Well, you get another one out if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I, I was watching, I watched it quite late because we just had it on in the corner. We were sort of chatting and stuff. And, um, about one o'clock in the morning, okay, they, they'd been promising this for ages. It was a couple of sort of Hollyoaks stars or something, yeah. or, male, male stars, were going to be part of a male stripper striptease. Yeah, you know, I, like I, full Monty type. I, thing. I, I turned that off. Yeah. I didn't want to watch that, Steve. Uh, it's half, do you know, it's the way he said they'd been promised it for ages. It was yeah. like one in the morning. Almost Carl's like he's staying up. Yes, well, Carl's got you. You've got, got the measure you. of me, Carl. <laughs> That's a bit weird. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that film last night, Gaylord Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point was, like, the thing about the, um, are you a Gaylord tape tied to a tree? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you are then. There you are. Oh, that's Done piece of evidence. Done um, you. I'm really on me. But no, seriously, so they bring on these, uh, this, this, this male stripper kind of gang come on, like, you know, firemen or whatever, and they come on, and they like, cut to the audience, and there was one woman just putting her glasses on. <laughs> like, about a four-year-old woman. It was like, it was one in the morning, she'd fallen asleep, and her friend had gone, Agnes, Agnes, quick, Here put your is. glasses on, wake up, they're getting yeah. their cocks out, You're and I mean cocks. Yeah, and yeah. They, they they did this strip tease, right? They did this strip tease, and I have to swear, right? They went right down to their um their underwear. They had these kind of, and they were just flashing their arses. They just, it was, uh, and I was thinking, this is for kiddies, and it was obscene. It was utterly obscene. Not I was one in the appalled. morning. It's not. What are you talking about? It was appalling. It's the charity and... is. No, but it was just, it was, it was offensive. I was offended by it. It was the BBC, it was charity, and there were blokes with their todgers almost out. <laughs> yeah, but the fact is, yeah, but it's post-watershed. You can have any event and give it to anything, no, can't you? No, that's not right. It's for children. Because a lot of children will stay up and watch that. Their parents will go, yeah, it's fine, you know, you can stay up and watch children in need. That's for kids. Yeah, but then you know? arses aren't, you know. It was, but it wasn't just arses. They gave the impression they were fully nude. I mean, thankfully, they weren't. I made a close inspection. But <laughs> it was obscene. Hey, yeah, me and Carl, Carl, me and Carl are room. looking at each other. Yeah, you're looking at each other. <laughs> gaz gaz gazing into each other's <laughs> eyes. Is, this, this, yeah, just for one week only, we're back at school, okay? <laughs> There's innuendos. We laugh when we say the word bender, cock. Um, tits meaning birds. Carl uh, and Ricky sitting in a tree. <laughs> K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Rick, have you been enjoying Bubba Sparks' current hit, Ugly? You're ugly. Oh, I'm ugly. Ugly. A song which means nothing to me, actually. I, I can't relate to it at all. <laughs> You've I have, yeah. I have, what yeah, do you make yeah. of Bubba? I like Bubba. He's a, a sort of down south I, kind of rapper. I know where this is going. I bet you've got a little bit of Bubba in your hip-hop challenge. Oh, well, we did have the hip-hop challenge a couple of weeks ago, but I lost. So basically, we're just playing a favourite hip-hop track of yeah. ours, aren't we, each yeah. week? And this is my selection. It's from Bubba's current album. It's not the, the hit, uh, Ugly. It's uh, The album's actually called Dark Days, Bright Nights, and I believe this song, presumably, comes from that title, because it's called Dark Days, Bright Nights. Enjoy it, Rick. I will. Bubba Sparks, Dark Days, Bright Nights, title track of his current album. Rick, what do you make of it? I love it. Do you enjoy it's it? great. It's hypnotic. It's ah, oh, the chorus. Is that a song? Is that sounds like Stevie Wonder? It or... does sound like Steve. I don't know. I, I haven't got the uh, inlay sleeve to hand. I can't tell you. Does anyone know? Maybe they could call in. Rick, uh, I'd love to give out the number. In fact, I will. <laughs> oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. Who is uh, providing the chorus for Bubba Sparks's Dark Days, Bright Nights, one hundred four point nine xfm? Wow, from Bubba Sparks to S Sparky Bubs. Those Sparky Bud Boys swayed. Hey, oh. slick. Strokes, last night on XFM, 104.9 before that swayed. Absolutely. Beautiful ones. Fella just phoned up and said, you were talking about waterfowl before. Um, the, 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 yeah, the only bird with a penis is the swan. Mm -hmm. And he said that it, it was worried him about the, uh, the ugly duckling. They'll go about, oh, he turned into a um, swan, but ducklings, they're not called um, ducklings, they're called cygnets. I pointed out that the, 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 the swan in question didn't understand because right. he thought he was a, a duckling yeah. and that, that all the other ducks sort of laughed at him because he was all gangly and everything but they turned into one and they realised oh I was a swan all along yeah, See? the ugly duckling story got me through so many bleak nights as a child. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't wait to, to one day turn into a swan. Still waiting for it. So you could have a knob. So you could have a, yeah, of course. Yeah, because, uh, so, uh, <laughs> look, Carl, look, don't worry. It's a nice little, no one's going to complain about this. It's this lovely, kids childish, time. lovely little innuendo. There's nothing nasty or vicious. There's no and Anyway, hate. off air, you're a different kettle of fish. You were yeah. trying to get us with the Gaylord's joke. Yes, he was. And he tried to do this. This is, we'd we done the Gaylord's, did you see that film last night, Gaylord's now? Carl, trying to get his own back, went, did you watch Gaylord's last night? Brilliant. It's got to be, did you see that film last night, Gaylord's Say No, and then you say no, and we all point and laugh. Oh, is, I was going to ask you, is it, is it true he's leaving Friday? <laughs> Robinson Crusoe. Nice one. High five, Rick. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, he got you right. He got you the right one there. I don't know what that means, but he did. Anyway. Yeah. Um, we're talking about children in need, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um... Carl, what's wrong He's just got it. He's just got it. He's just Go got on. it. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about children in need earlier, and uh, as I say, I'm not a fan of it. And I, this is a couple of years ago, I was working, um, and we I had to drive up to uh, to Blackpool. Oh, yeah. And so, we, it was Comet Relief Night. It was a Friday night, and we were listening to all the different kind of BBC radio stations, because they all cover Comet Relief. They all sort of link up as one big yeah. thing. And uh, I think this was maybe like, sort of, I don't know, BBC Solly Hull or something. And uh, they, they've always got, like, they've got this, this one guy in the studio doing all the DJing, and um, there's some bloke who's sort of outside the BBC with some kids and whatever else, um, kind of doing a live link-up. And the guy outside was Steve Baxter. I forget the name of the DJ inside. I love the fact you remember this man's name. Well, it's important, because uh, we're listening, and the guy in the studio, he's the and he's chatting away and he's going got a signed picture uh, signed picture here of uh, the Spice Girls uh, all the girls have signed that uh, so the highest bidder gets to win that and you have that and uh, um, I seem to have run out of words <laughs> he just said I seem to have run out of words and we were like listening like okay and he just went I seem to have run out of words I wonder if Steve Baxter's got any for me <laughs> And Steve Baxter was just outside, like, obviously not, not <laughs> ready, just going... Didn't have any words either? I, yeah, no words. Well, who's got all the words then? <laughs> it was wordless. I don't believe it. He's probably used up too many words in the first hour. Exactly. He just used all the words up. And he didn't want to repeat himself. Exactly. So he just thought, that, that's it. There's a hideous blunder. So we were, um, we, were, we were enjoying that and the work of Steve Baxter. And uh, we were driving along. And then we were driving and we got stuck in this just jam on the way up to Blackpool. And I saw this kind of white Mercedes, like, a couple of them. I thought, it looks quite swank, you know. And I'm... Uh, swank. <laughs> and I drove up. We were driving up behind it. And the number plate was something like, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was something like Orv 1. I'm thinking, interesting, Orv 1, you know. So we're driving alongside, who is driving? No, actually, it wasn't a driver. It was, there was a guy driving it, in the front seat, asleep. Green dog. Keith Harris. Really? Keith Harris was there, Orville, as I recall, on the back seat. Oh, no. I couldn't believe it, yeah. Was asleep, or...? <laughs> I think he was asleep. Just knackered. I didn't, I didn't see Cuddles, the crazy monkey. I suspect he was, I imagine he would have popped up at some point, just kind no, of annoying you, the driver's uh, hair, you've just got, going you, crazy. Yeah, you've got, uh, I think Cuddles has to go in the boot. He's got to go in the boot, because he, he caused havoc. Yeah, and he, he, he must, no, knowing Cuddles, he'd put his hands over the driver's eyes, exactly, looking around. Causing but, all kinds of trouble. But the, the thing is, he doesn't understand road safety, to be, to be fair. <laughs> well, he's a monkey. Yeah, yeah. He's a monkey, and he's got and, a lisp. And not even, <laughs> not even a real one, at that. Yeah. No. Is it the thing what was about um, Orville is that, that that argument raged for years between him and Harris. And Orville's right. He can't fly. He can't fly. Yeah. So I'm worried that Harris will lull him to full sense of security. But you can fly. Yeah, and then when Harris is out, Orville will climb onto a chair, onto a windowsill, basically think he can fly and just plummet yeah. to his death. I think, just a quick point about Orville. I'm surprised he's still not potty trained. <laughs> Because he's been, he's been wearing that nappy of his for years. I know. Because he can talk, he's mastered the power of it, speech. Yeah, yeah. Still crapping everywhere, I assume. I assume so. Flying around, doing yeah. this. And as we definitely know, as an, he's a duck, so he hasn't got a cock. He has not got a penis. Penis, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that was a mistake. There, I did say cock. Did meaning. you mean penis, though? Yeah. You shouldn't have said that, Rick. I'm really sorry. You should have sorry. pretended you meant bird. Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh, we're going to put your, off, Put eh? your fingers in your mouth like this, Carl. Right? right. Put it apart like that. All right. All right. Now just say bucket and spade. No, with your no, fingers in your mouth. No, put your fingers like and just say bucket and spade. Bucket and spade. No, no don't no, do keep that. Put your fingers in your mouth when you say it. Fuck it. Oh, Carl, oh, play a record. Oh, that's outrageous, Carl. Smashing Pumpkins, Untitled Mix FM, 104.9. I just got to tell you something, Steve. Remember, um, uh, at my birthday party, uh, my girlfriend had bought me one of those, um, uh, arcade games. She put money in a pub. Oh, it's a and quiz machine, though, quiz isn't it? Quiz machine, yeah, yeah touch the screen. And we're all playing, but Steve, with his general uh, film knowledge, w people were getting, like, 100,000 points and getting through, right? Steve got something like 8 million. Right, listen, I got the top score on a movie trivia quiz game, right? Yeah. Who's the geek now? Yeah. <laughs> all right, Carl? <laughs> Hello. No, but it was impossible. And I, I tried it, and I, uh, for, like... Months after, I just thought, I've just got to knock him off the top. And I did it with all the other categories, and I was best at rock. I was best at rock. Let's, let's say that. But by no means is, you know, the, the gap between a, a friend of mine and a friend of yours, Johnny Candon, the lovely Irish comedian, came round last night, yeah. had a couple of goes. He got something like 30 million. That's mental. He was That's just, madness. Yeah. 
Uh, in fact, he's you're right because um, Johnny bought this comic. Right, he loves Doctor Who, and he bought this comic. And Steve, he left it there. And Steve I got a post now on and every page wrote geek. Yeah. Johnny gets it home, reads this, reads it on the tube, and there's geek written everywhere on every page. That's the sort of vicious man Steve is. He can hand it out. Do you know what I mean? Imagine him calling you a geek. What could that? What must that feel like to be called a geek by Steve Merchant? What do you think, Carl? Every week he has a go at me anyway. Why yeah. do I have a go at you? You're having a go at me every week. three weeks. <clears throat> what? You've been having a go at me. I have not had a go. You've always no, had a go at me. You've always said to me, what do I look like? And what do you expect me to do? Lie? Oh, he's done you again, Steve! No, I'm not he's getting into this. He's done you again. I've lad called up before and said, oh, have a go at Steve again, these looks. And it's not like a game. I'm not <gasps> like coming in here every week and wanting to make you look, you know, come across as an ugly bloke. I don't need to do that. <laughs> he's done you what? up. I can't. He's like, done you up. Is this because of the Gaylord stuff? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> just... you're having a go at me again. Oh. It's just that you, you had a go at me before... I didn't I have a go at you at all. I, mean, I was talking to Ricky. I haven't mean, I I mean, spoken a word to you. your eyes. <laughs> Is this why you're in an ugly mood? A bad mood? A generally grim mood? Is it because, like, you you just think I'm going to have a go at you? I don't know what it is. When I get here, you're all right. And then as soon as you come in here, you change. I, I haven't done anything! What are you talking about? You're paranoid! I haven't said anything, mate. I've I'll drawn a little habit. picture of you here, but I've not I'll tell you what, anything. what we need now is a song for the lovers. Oh, I want to tell you now. Please. This has been one of my favourite songs for about 20 years. It's by David Bowie. Now, David Bowie's had his phases, and I liked his glam stuff, and I, you know, Tim Machine mm -hmm. went off. And it, it, you know, he's, he's always sort of there on and off, right? But this song is off space on it, and it, it's called Letter to Hermione, and I don't know why he stopped writing songs like this, because this is probably one of the most beautiful songs ever recorded. And I know Steve agrees with me on this. I do indeed. Rick, can I just kiss and make up with Carl? No, that is... No, let me just let me just kiss my kiss. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't... Next, then next week it'll be the same again. What it doesn't that? mean anything. It's like saying sorry. Lips. Oh, on the lips. go on. He's oh, like... Carl! Get off oh, it. <laughs> I've never... Carl has oh, gone a absolute shade of purple straining not to have merchants... There's no point, Steve. What no. There's no point. No, just shake. Just shake and make up. <laughs> <laughs> Shake what, Rick? <laughs> there you go. All friends, sit down. This, that's lovely. That's a lovely moment. Uh, it's XFM 104.9, and this is Letter to Hermione by David Bowie. It's beautiful. Oh. Letter to Hermione by David Bowie. Well, wow. after that, I think he wrote The Laughing Gnome. I know. It's just, it, the thing about David Bowie, I feel the same way. It's like, he's clearly a great, you know, rock musician, great, you know, great fun records. You know, I saw him at Glastonbury, absolutely fantastic entertainer. But his songs have never gripped me. They never got me at heart, you know. Except that one. Except that one. That's yeah, the first one I've yeah. ever heard of his, which really got oh, me in good. the gut. Yeah, Amazing yeah. lyrics. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Carl, what were your thoughts? It's all right. <laughs> yeah, you're a poet, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Play something else, then. Yeah. Blair. Coffee and TV. Good to hear that one again. Yes, yeah, good. For that, Radiohead, True Love Waits. Well, Steve, it's time for my world-famous film review. People love it. Yeah. 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 How can I just ask, before you crack on with the film review, I notice you often do films that people have already seen. Well, you see, that's what I mean. You, you, that's why I think your film review failed, because people didn't know what film you are talking about. They hadn't seen it. Yes. See, there was mine. I picked ones they've seen. Sure. That, that, you know, that, that, that. Well, a lot of people would say that the, the benefit of a film review was the fact that they hadn't seen it yet, so they were going to make up their mind based on that. I don't, know. I don't know who'd say that. I prefer Rickers. Okay. See? All right, Carl. See, there you are again, being nasty to me. No, it's just, he's got a choice. All right, anyway, so my point is that how would you hope people would use your reviews? Right? Whatever, the, however they want, okay. really. Okay. So... Would you hope that they'd maybe seen the film but they hadn't yet made up their mind? <laughs> Whether they liked it or Whether not. Whether they liked it or well, not. Well, this, this is, up, again, up to them, this is, you know, this is for everyone, it's easy. So if someone say it's... Because I think, was it, you did, uh, one of your most famous ones, I think, was uh, one for the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Now that came out, I think, in 1975. Yeah. So maybe some people saw it in 1975, haven't yet made up their mind as to what they thought yeah, of it. Yeah, now this is, this uh, put them straight and what sure. to look for next time, maybe. Okay. Um, I've, oh, now, well, ready? Rookie Gervais Film Review. Sure. Review. Right? Chosen Rain Man. Rain Man, okay. Now, this yeah. has been on TV quite a few times, and it was a multiple Oscar winner. Exactly. Okay. So, okay, right. Rain Man, it's got Tom Cruise in it, yep. and he's all right, he's normal, but he finds out he's got a brother who's a bit mad. Dustin Hoffman is doing it, right? And it's meant to be. He's all weird, but he's meant to be, so it's good acting. Now, he... Oh, God. He needs to keep his brother, but they don't want him to have a brother, and... He doesn't remember a lot, but he dropped him in the bath and burnt him when he was little, clumsy idiot. But then he finds out he can make a bit of money, so they get the same suits, and they go, bet two for good, well, because he's got special powers. 
so he can know what the what the roulette. He wins that and he drops some toothpicks. He knows how many there are. And he recognises the waitress. He can just throw through the book. He's got all his football cards. Don't put them out of order. Don't go in the telephone box with him. He smells. And get him back in time for Jeopardy or watch it. Anyway, then they slap his head and get worried. Qantas don't crash. So he's, he's got all that. And in the end, he doesn't, I don't think. But at least they've met each other. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Rayman, a film about autism, which is strangely appropriate, I think, when you're reviewing it. Anyway. What would you give it out of uh, ten? Oh, uh, nine. Okay. Thanks very much for that. Were you useful? Mm. Yeah? Have you seen the film before? No, but no. I, I, I will now. Okay, <laughs> jolly good. Well, uh, excellent. New Order. 60 miles an hour on XFM 104.9. Well, well, quarter of an hour to go. Yep. We've still got your song for the ladies. Song for the ladies coming up. Um, time now, though, Rick, for Under the Covers. You've got me covered. Cover me bad. <laughs> uh, which is when we play a cover version of yeah. uh, a well-known hit. To see the sort of effort that goes into the show. There's a lot of work. We've learned something. We've learned the only bird with a, um, a penis is the swan. swan. We've had an interesting anecdote where, where he saw Orville. I saw Orville. Yeah. Keith Harrison we've Orville. Had, we've had a film review, Rain Man. Informative. Award-winning, an award-winning film I reviewed <laughs> yes, today. Yes. So <laughs> that was an Oscar winner. Carl. Ants. There's been things about ants. Ants never sleep. Yeah. If you missed the beginning, you won't know that fact. We've had various songs, music, and that. Beautiful. So carry on, Steve. Cover me up. Um, the White Stripes. Everyone's raving about them, Rick. Sure. Uh, they are an exciting band, and this is their cover of the Dolly Parton classic Jolene. Love it already. <laughs> White Stripes and their version of Jolene. What did you make of it, really? I loved it. I loved it. Good. I want to ask Carl a question, though, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Carl's sometimes in awe of this newfangled world that we live in. What, uh, what do you think of the scenario? What do you think is going on there? Because it's a bloke singing to a woman, begging her not to take his man. What, what do you think is going on there? Say again. Well, that's a bloke there, singing. Yeah, to his, to, his, uh, to his wife, Jolene. Right. <laughs> were, you, were you listening to the lyrics, or...? <laughs> you see, I, I got mixed What's up anyway. I thought it was about that, that one about the person who chucks himself off a bridge. <laughs> so I was thinking more about that than listening to that one. So right, just, listen. Well, go on, it. Right. Jolene, Jolene, I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. You're flaming locks of auburn hair. He's gonna, even though you can, don't. He's all I've got. You're a beautiful woman. Don't take my man, because mm. I can't compete with you, right? Yeah. What do you think's going on there, though? Because, you, you know, it's Dolly Parton singing it. We know what's going on. They're fighting over the same man, aren't we? Yeah. What do you think is going on when a bloke singing it to Jolene? What, what, what do you think of the scenario there? That's one of them names, isn't it? That could be a bloke's name. It's like Leslie. Oh, Christ. Okay, sorry, it was a... I don't... We, I wish you'd not asked him that question. <laughs> it's so exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Do I ants, love Carl. Do ants sleep, Carl? <laughs> which, which bird's got a cock? Swan. A swan. Okay, nice one. Listen, I want to play that song for various people who have uh, emailed and phoned in saying they want requests. We don't really play requests on the show, but we'd like to mention them anyway. Uh, Matt Barr, Magic Thighs. Uh, that's not Matt Barr's Magic Thighs. No. That's Matt Barr and Magic Thighs. Yeah. Kieran in Dublin, Stuart in Hackney, Lisa and Alison in Crouch End, and Glenn in Crystal Palace, who was phoning up with a nice uh, message earlier. All of you, thanks for listening, and uh, thanks for enjoying it. Sorry we didn't play your requests, but uh, tune in next time. It'll be fun. Um, anyway, I just thought I wanted to say, really. Here's Tragic. What's tragic? What, what did you want me to say about that song? Just your opinion. Your own opinion was fine. It's, it's in fact, in fact, your own opinion is better than anything I could really hope for. W without doubt. Whenever I ask you a question... You constantly surprise us. Yeah. You're, it's, it's wonderful. So only ever... Carry on telling the truth. Carry on saying exactly what's on your mind. And I think this could become a great... You're like a man who was frozen <laughs> in Victorian era <laughs> and has been reawoken and he's kind of discovering the world. Some <laughs> things make sense. Other things yeah. don't. It's beautiful. It's As really opposed odd. to one that was made in a castle in Victorian times like <laughs> Steve. Oh, that's just... Oh, I've joined in with Carl. I can't believe it. I oh, sorry. I thought you were on my side. Yeah, no, it was irresistible, though, wasn't it? I'm really sorry. Should we play a record? <laughs> right, I'm afraid that is about it from us. Absolutely. Um, I always leave the ladies with the song, Rick, as you know. And the song for the ladies this week, again, it comes from the free giveaway CD that comes with this excellent little magazine called Comes With A Smile. And uh, there's always something interesting. How are you I've spelling <laughs> I've played uh, the Mull Historical Society before. This is a track. It says it's just a demo, which is, I don't know why. If, they're sound, if they've been picked up, it's outrageous. They're called Sloan, and this is called Pretty Together. See you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.